Hi, Ted McClyman, author of Discover Your Money Temperament, Chapter 4, The Rules Have Changed. This is an incredibly important chapter. I think when you get the book that you need to take some time and go over this with some depth. The rules of change simply means that the reality of modern life has changed how we work with money, how we work with the concept of work and retirement. And if you've learned nothing during the, uh, the C-19 virus crisis as things can change rapidly and that what worked just a few years ago may not work today. This is incredibly true with our economy. So let's talk about a situation. Let's put you in your work environment. What has changed where you work in the last few years? How has technology impacted the way you work? Do you have a new piece of software? A new device? Are there jobs that you used to do that are no longer done at your, your spot? Who do you know that's working the gig economy? They don't even have what is called a traditional job. How many people are now working for home around the country that may never go back to a traditional workforce? How many employers are now realizing that their concept of the workplace needs to change? That's what I mean. But the important point with change right now is it's happening incredibly rapidly. You have to understand that in today's global economy, an event on the other side of the world, i.e. a virus, or a change in technology, or a new piece of software, or a political upheaval could radically and forever change you, your life, your family, your job, your profession, everything. And what used to take months, sometimes years to ripple through the economy now happens in days, minutes, and seconds. Just last week, we had two of the largest swings in the history of the United States in movement of the stock market. The largest crash, single day crash and the largest single day recovery. It wasn't too long ago that a recovery of that magnitude was, nobody could even consider that happening. It was unfathomable. And with a change like that would take sometimes months to be felt throughout the market. Now it happens in a split second. That is huge, huge, huge. So when I say the rules have changed, let's look, think about a couple of things, how it has changed. How many people have you know, you know that are still wearing suits to work? Why? That's a cultural change. That's a belief set change. It's also a work set change. How many people, you, how many of you work on teams that we didn't work with teams before? How many of you work with somebody on the other side of the country, the other side of the world, and you're tied through technology? Teleconferencing, Zoom, Facebook Live. Let me give you a story of my case. I have been working from home for two or three years now, but my business is larger. It has a greater reach. I have partners in other parts of the world and other parts of the country that I could not possibly have reached and worked with if it weren't for technology. I've got a partner group out of San Diego in a company that is a lot of fun called Dream Smart Academy. And we're using all this behavioral stuff from my book to change the world. But the key takeaway here is I've got four partners I have never physically met. We were introduced on LinkedIn. We started talking via text message and email. Then it moved up to uh, Zoom calls and conference calls. That became a, a, a legitimate licensed business and we're doing great things and we're doing it all with technology. What I'm doing with this book, the way I'm talking to you is technology. But what you've got to get your head around is in this economy, in this world, the world, the, the old rules of study hard, get a good education, get a great job, work hard, retire well, die happy on the golf course, those rules are gone. You've got to understand that a great education from a great school is not a guarantee to success. You've got to understand that just working hard may not do it. You also have to understand that retirement, as you 
is your parents or grandparents defined it probably isn't a good term for you. So let's talk about study hard and get a great education. Well, unless you are going to a couple of the truly high top tier elite schools, most employers really don't care. They're looking at this, the education experience as a filter, as a way to get you started to learn some things. And unless you are a technician and you've got performance-based training to do something absolutely, uh, which is hands-on type stuff, they're going to look for performance, not necessarily a pedigree. The other part you've got to take a look at is the cost of education. Man, it's cost a lot of money to go to school right now. And I think there are a lot of people floating around today that are going, did I get, was the cost reward worth it? Good job. What is a good job? There are people not so long ago that said they had a great job in the newspaper industry as printers, sending out hard copies of newspapers. Most people don't even read them anymore. How is the smartphone? change the concept of work, change what people do. Now there's a plus and a minus to that. New technology creates, has created millions and millions and millions of jobs, but it's also eliminated jobs or caused jobs to change. There's somebody out there in the United States that is still making buggy whips. It's a very narrowly defined custom artisan industry and the individual probably makes magnificent buggy whips. They probably cost a lot of money. And there are probably people around that will pay his price or her price to get a hold of that custom buggy whip. But as a commodity, it doesn't work there anymore. We don't use buggy whips. They've been replaced. So what you've got to ask yourself is what kind of business are you in? What do you really do? And I make the point in the book that today you have a guarantee of an opportunity but not necessarily a guarantee of a job for life and a guarantee that a job will be there. Nobody says that this is fair, but this is the current economy. You have to be prepared. So what I'm telling everybody now is you are self-employed. That's right. You are self-employed. And being self-employed, that means you need to understand how you think and feel about money. You need to understand your money temperament. You are in charge of you. You are the CEO of the most important company in the world. It's you. And once you understand that you're the CEO of you and you can start designing a board of directors, a support network, you will find a different way of doing business. Business as usual will show up, shut up and do the work and go home. Today is I'm in charge. I'm empowered. I am in control of my own destiny. I have to be flexible and nimble. I have to understand how I process information. I need to know my inner, my, my inner money temperament. How do I think and feel about money? Then I need to have the tools in place to run a good business. Know what business you're in. Can you afford to do everything you're doing or do you need to outsource and delegate? Know the rules of what you do and adapt. And finally, invest in yourself. Probably the most important thing you can do is engage your feeling brain to make sure that you want to move forward, but then take your thinking brain to be very, very brutally honest about where you work, what you do, and the outlook for your career and your profession, and then make a conscious decision, which is a, feeling, feeling, a, a thinking brain activity to say, I'm going to continue to improve. I'm going to change my skill set. I'm going to constantly invest in myself because I'm putting money back into my business and that's me. That's huge. And then the final thought is the old concept of retiring in the 60s or uh, 62, 65, I think those days are gone. What happens now is we don't retire, but we transition to a different point in our life to do different things. For me, I started as a Marine, I became a financial advisor, now I'm an author, consultant, and speaker. And I will do this forever because I enjoy it and I'm helping people. But if you told me when I came out of college, or well, I'll be very honest, uh, when I came out of college, if there were, I had some economic professors, if they knew what I'm doing now in this field, they would be rolling in their freaking graves. But I adapted. 
I changed. I continued to upgrade my skill set. I am now the CEO and president of me. I'm accountable and responsible for everything that happens and doesn't happen. And you have to have that mindset, which is a feeling, thinking brain mindset. Be very brutally honest of what you do and what you're good at, not so good at, and focus on the good things, focus on your, your comparative advantage, and take the time to enhance those skills, to improve those skills, but be agile, be open-minded, look for opportunities, but never, never re forget that you are accountable and responsible for every decision you take, particularly with money. There you go. Be back in a couple of minutes with chapter five.